When this morning's guest came to Coastal Carolina University, he was about business. Now he's about students. Part two of Dr. David A. Desenzo is coming up next. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're at the E. Craig Wall Senior College of Business Administration on the campus of Coastal Carolina University. We're on part two of Dr. David A. Desenzo, the president Great. of the university. Good morning. Good morning. Dr. Desenzo again. Great Good to, to get you back you in. A Thank lot you. happening. Of course, we've loved all week. We kicked off the week with Tom Marshall, the president of the Florence, Greater Florence Chamber of Commerce highlighting this weekend's big uh, Memorial Day and Memorial Weekend Mayfly Air Show in Florence, of course, on Tuesday with Dr. Baxter Sapp from Durham, a 57-plus year dentist in the Triangle and an amazing guy highlighting the Oral Longevity Project that the North Carolina Dental Society has kicked off with the ADA and other folks. Amazing. And, of course, they have you in yesterday and to be with your, the mayor of Conway tomorrow yes. and having Greg Martin in here tomorrow will be a real treat. That's wonderful. Thanks for having us in. And, Thank of course, you. this conference room, as we talked about yesterday, is probably a place during your first four years on campus you spent a lot of time. It was a good bit of time in this conference room. Right. A lot of exciting opportunities were built out of this conference room conversation. I bet they were. <laughs> and a, what a beautiful, uh, beautiful building. You it think is. about the, the history of Craig Wall and Craig Wall Sr., Jr., the entire, uh, their impact on this area and on Absolutely. Coastal Carolina University has been tremendous. And of course for him, and I guess his son, folks that had deep ties to Davidson, small college there outside of Charlotte, to think about them committing a lot here to Coastal Carolina University helps recognize why this university is so important to the region. Absolutely. So important to the region. Of course, not only here in the, in the Myrtle Beach area, but up in Columbia. A lot's been going on this week, and of course we, it sets the stage, Not even though we won't know everything until the end of the day, a lot, a lot of focus on the referendum to open up the door for a penny sales tax in November, the vote on a penny sales tax. Share with viewers sure. the significance if that was to take place and it was to pass, how that would impact Coastal Carolina University. Well, let me, let me go to a, a broader picture on yeah. this. that. You know, as an institution, while we're 55 years old, it, it's really been in the past 14, 15 years since our independence that we've seen some of the growth in, in programs in some of the buildings that we have on our campus. But we have been one of the fastest growing public institutions in the state of South Carolina. We've not had a new building on this campus in the past 12 years. And we're starting to burst at the seams, let alone some of the buildings that we have are, are in dire need of, of uh, some, some maintenance. Past and 12 years. Past 12 years. Wow. There has not been a bond bill in the state, I believe, for the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. And so we recognize that we have got to do something. Uh, over the course of this spring semester, we met with the academic folks, we met with the athletic folks, and we're looking at somewhere in the neighborhood of about 250 to 300 million dollars of capital project needs wow. on this campus. Mm. Academic buildings, athletic facilities, student recreational facilities, there are just a lot of things that, that we need to ultimately achieve our goal of being the comprehensive university of choice in, in the state of South Carolina. So you start going, where do you find that kind of money? Right. Absolutely, there are a lot of different resource needs that you have and that you can touch various areas. But you know, unfortunately right now the state's economy hasn't uh, been real promising for a lot of us. Uh, I think next year is probably going to be a difficult year too. And we simply have to figure out a way to ultimately be creative, be entrepreneurial, to raise the kind of funding that, that we're going to need to start moving in the direction of, of capital improvements. We've been working with our students. Uh, this past February, our students came to the Board of Trustees and, in essence, asked the Board of Trustees to consider implementing a fee 
on their tuition that would be used solely for capital projects, mm -hmm. and we're looking at having that finalized at our June board meeting. We are looking at a lot of different options, but the one that probably is, is unique is what we're calling the penny sales tax. Right. If, if people remember last year, the Horry County School Board had a, a tax penny tail sales tax referendum right. that was approved by the voters, but then because of some problems, right. was overturned at, at the state Supreme Court level. We have been in some discussions with the, the school board and with Horry Georgetown Tech and recognize that while the current legislation allows the school board to go after a penny sales tax for capital improvements, the current law prohibits institutions of higher education. Mm. And so the, the, the three boards, the three chairman presidents got together and said, you know, it's, it's time that we come together in a collaborative effort mm -hmm. and really look at how we can enhance education in this area by looking at pre-K through 16 plus. Right. And in order to do that, we needed to change the legislation. And so we've been working the past several months. Mm -hmm. uh, it was House Bill uh, 4883, I believe, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. started the process which would include and allow the inclusion of tech and coastal right. in, in the bill, although this is a statewide uh, referendum, sure. uh, statewide legislation that would allow any institution of higher education to work with their local school board. Uh, the gist of it is, and, and you know, we're, we're so hopeful that, that it oh, does yeah. pass because yeah. of what it can do to benefit the three institutions of higher education, well, the two institutions of higher education and the, and the school board, sure. is it will enable us to generate probably a little over a hundred million dollars over a 15-year period that, right? that we can use mm -hmm. for bricks and mortars only. Now, all the legislation that we're looking at only will give us the right to put it on a referendum vote. Mm -hmm. But what's interesting about this legislation is right now this penny sales tax if it's approved and if the voters voted in. In November. In November, thank mm -hmm. you. Currently, the millage on property tax is 0.28, or 28 mills right. for the, the tax bills that go out. Right. If nothing happens, we anticipate that that millage is going to increase by a fair amount. Right. If this penny sales tax legislation is approved in Columbia, if the voters vote for it in November. The, the driving force, the motivating factor behind this is that people's millage on their property tax bills will drop to about eight to 10 mills. Wow. So that it has a significant effect on individuals' property tax. Right. We're also very fortunate to be in an area where roughly 60% of the taxes that are collected are collected by the tourists or sure. from the tourists. Oh, yeah who come in. So this has a tremendous opportunity to, to raise funds that can be used specifically for institutions of education that will change literally the face of all of our institutions. That's a no-brainer. How couldn't everyone be behind that? I mean, what a great opportunity. And of course, there may be other counties where they wouldn't because they're, they don't have the significant uh, right. tourist influx. The, visitors to the area to be able to justify it and to be able to piggyback on them. There may be other parts, but that's the great thing is if it, it uh, passed, that would be entirely up to them whether or not they'd it's, want to pursue it's it. It's each jurisdiction right. would have the, the right to decide whether they wanted to go for it or not. That's tremendous. And so we really see the legislation, as, it's enabling legisl legislation that will give all of us an opportunity right. to decide if it works for us and then have the, the citizens vote yes or no. Right. So that's all we're asking is for an opportunity to take it in front of the voters. You know, when you go back uh, several years and, and you look at obviously the, the state support of, of higher education in particular, and, and we've heard the governor talk a, a good number of times that 
we as institutions need to be creative, we need to be entrepreneurial, and we need to find ways to have less reliance on the state. This meets all of those oh, yeah. criteria. Oh, yeah. Well, we're asking, give us an opportunity right. to do things ourselves so that we're not an increasing burden to the state. That's tremendous. Well, good luck with that. Well, I'm thank sure you. everything will come as planned, both uh, in Columbia as well as here in Ori when the vote would take place in November. Well, that could we're, be tremendous. We're you, you highlighted not a new building being constructed on campus for 12 years. Right. Clearly there's some buildings that are getting pretty crowded, or what, how does that impact when we think about on the facility side? You continue to have a tremendous influx of students, as you highlighted yesterday and even earlier this morning. A lot more folks are trying to get in for the 1,700 slots, right. plus or minus you had for the incoming uh, fall semester. How are you all getting them in? Well, we've had some excess capacity in, in some of the buildings. We're, we're open now from 8 a.m. to about 11 p.m. at night. So we've tried to, to draw the, the increase out by the excess capacity. Unfortunately, that doesn't always map one-to-one. -one. Because we have strong science programs, you have some unusual scheduling circumstances when you have the lab classes. Right. I think it's been well known that we've had a science building that's been in dire need of, of repair. Oh, yeah. And so one of the things that we are doing, and we've got about seven capital projects that are moving through the system currently. Mm -hmm. We're going to be putting on about a $15 million addition to our current science building. And, and what we've done there is we, we've corrected some of the problems that we've had in the past with uh, roof leaks and, right. and the like. But what we're doing, and, and the faculty in the science uh, college have, have just been so supportive of it, because we, again, brought them in and said, right. how do we fix this? The decision was to put on this addition, which will focus on the, the highly complex labs, mm -hmm. which will have the, it will be the labs for chemistry and for the other sciences where you need the ventilation, you need the, the more highly complex equipment. When that is done, we will then look at gutting the existing building, tearing it down to its bare walls and rebuilding it in a way, again, that will have faculty offices, classrooms, and what we're considering the, the low com complex labs. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I make the statement, you could cut a, a frog up on this table. You don't need a lot of, of the ventilation and right. you don't need a lot of the, the protection equipment. Mm -hmm. And then longer term, probably eight, 10 years out, uh, depending on how successful we are at our sure. fundraising, we'll look at putting a third component into the science building, another addition, which right. will then enable us to bring all of our science classes onto this side of campus. The other things that we're looking at is, you know, I, I have asked a lot of students, especially freshmen who I meet with periodically, uh, if they're coming back. And sadly, we lose uh, about 25% of our freshman class. Oh. And, and it's an issue that, that is a concern to, to us in particular, obviously to university presidents everywhere. There's right. always sure. short retention. Well, one of the things that I ask the, the students as to why they're leaving, and, and you get a few that say they're homesick and they're right. this and that, and I certainly understand that. But the vast majority of the students that I've talked to tell me that there's nothing to do on this campus. Mm. And interestingly, Greg, I, I look at a list of all the activities oh, that exist yeah. on this campus, yeah. and I sit there and say, it didn't make sense to me. Right. I took that list home to my 16-year-old daughter, and I said, look at this list. Tell me what I'm missing, because my students tell me there's nothing here for them to do. Right. And it took her all of about 20 seconds to come back and say, well, Dad, these are things you would like but people my age, we wouldn't. Wow. I said, well, what do you think students are looking for? And they said, we want a place to work out. We want a place to recreate. We want a place where we can hang out, where we can play games, where we can do this. We want a climbing wall. We want, and all of a sudden, we started to look at what our peer institutions had. Right. And you found these very elaborate recreational centers. And so, Part of what our students and coming to the Board of Trustees were right. talking about is we need that Student Recreational Activity Center. Mm -hmm. And that we've got planned uh, as a $30 million addition to what's currently our Kimball Arena. 
30 million. 30 million wow. dollar. Wow. Well, addition. that's uh, retention is critical. It so is. it's uh, that sounds like a small price to pay, even though that's a gigantic number. That sounds like a small price to pay for it is. keeping students here uh, the entire four-year experience, right. and of course, continue to have more students transfer over. Absolutely. Here, you share yesterday that transfers are a big push yes. in recognizing that, whether it's from Ori Georgetown Technical College or from other schools statewide. Hopefully, you'll get to the point where some of the other older four-year institutions in the state are having some of their students come on down to Coastal Carolina University. Well, you have some of the, 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 the larger institutions, Clemson, for right. example, that has right. pretty much capped their enrollment. Mm -hmm. That's not to say a student who was planning to go to Clemson who may not get in will come to us. Right. We're hoping that we're attractive enough to oh, yeah. bring them in. But it is clear that, that we have been growing and we're going to continue to grow, but we're going to manage that growth. But we need to make sure we have the facilities, the programs, the academic majors. It's not all one single element. Right, right. 1954 was a big year. The mid-70s were big. And was it 1993 that uh, the full end of independence, am I correct? What are the dates there? I mean, Coastal has been obviously around a long time, but really recognizing its independence and growing from its the four-year uh, student population has been for how long? Well, I think in 1974, if my right. dates are right. correct, we, we, we offered for the first time the four-year four year. degree. Yes. Yes. But we were still part of USC mm -hmm. at, at that time. In 1993, we became an independent okay. state institution. Right. So at that time, I think we had maybe 3,000, 3,500 oh, students, yeah. if we had that many. Amazing. So we have just had tremendous growth in, in the past 12, 15 Skyrocketed. years. Skyrocketed. As we think about and we think about some peer institutions where they've got alumni that have been around, I mean, uh, four-year uh, four institutions right. where they've had alumni for 100 plus years. And so when you've got a relatively young uh, mm. uh, university having just had four-year alumni from the 70s right. to present in, in its independent status since the early 90s, it's really uh, getting alumni involvement is so important. It, it is important. Part of what we have found is a lot of the folks that, that got the four-year degree at USC Coastal, uh, we need to do a better job of making them feel part of Coastal Carolina University. Right, right. One of the things that we're looking at is giving them an opportunity to have their degrees, their diplomas right. recast as Coastal right. Carolina University. Uh, again, the decision will be up to them. Sure. But we're starting, and, and we started about four months ago, where I've talked to my advancement people and I've said once a month I want to be in a different part of the United States right. looking to start alumni chapters. And you. we have now been to Atlanta, to Charlotte, to New York. We've got several others that we're targeting, but what we did is we took known addresses right. and simply looked for concentrations. And it's an opportunity not to say you as an alum come back and see us. Right. I'm going we'll out to, to see them. And at least once a year I will go out to each of those chapters just to provide updates. But we want to start bringing the people back to the Coastal Carolina University family. Oh yeah, and I can, I, I, the, one of the greatest vehicles, just your website, coastal.edu, when you go in there and you click a drop down and it opens up to eight more drop downs. Right. It's a very deep site, a lot of great info. As I went in there last week to try to prepare for this week's a series of interviews to see even just the daily breakdown of uh, administration, I mean of utilization of offices around campus or buildings to see how how in tune everyone is on it's tremendous and y'all are not in a uh, full uh, academic season right now I mean no, it's in the, the summer to see a, still a lot going on but the website's magnificent we're very proud of, the, of that website yeah. and, and again they're always uh, will be room for improvement, but I think you know we look at a lot of other websites. Right. And when you see something on another website that says, you know, that would help right. our students right. or our faculty and staff, we look at putting things like that on ours. Take a great idea and make it better. Absolutely. We've seen that in Dave's blog. We uh. saw the uh, presidential blog there. That's probably one of a kind. Uh, anywhere. Uh, I, I got that from another oh, website. Another I've, seen that, I've yeah. seen that before. Yeah. Uh, what, what I've tried to do to make mine a little bit different is the ones that I've seen, I, I think there's two components. One is uh, 
Sometimes it's out there under a president's name, but it's not the president necessarily right. responding. Right. Or two, you may get something that says the president responds you know, on the third Friday of every month. Sure. I've tried to make, as we talked about yesterday, tried right. to make mine a little more real time. Oh, so yeah. that if somebody writes something on the blog, I do try to get back and respond to it as quickly as possible. And having a, a child that's soon to be matriculating to college, and of course having you shared with us, I, I think yesterday, four, but just sharing this morning, you're being able to go home to a 16-year-old and right. talk to her about what are some things that you expect you want to experience in a couple of years when you go off to college. Share with us about where the others are in the pecking order. and. Okay. Uh, well, as you mentioned, I have four children. I'll, I'll start with the, the oldest. Uh, I have a son who's 24 who is, knock on wood, going to graduate from Coastal in December. Congratulations, uh, yeah. We're very excited about that opportunity. And, and you know, I, I've used that in, in a couple of different ways in orientation, not to, to deviate. Oh, but, sure. you know, when I talk to parents, one of the things that I say is I not only believe in this university, and in the, the faculty and staff and what they do, but I believe in it enough to entrust my own child here. Right, right. And I think that resonates well with them. Mm -hmm. I've always been a person that if I wouldn't put my son or daughter in a classroom, then I wouldn't put yours in. Right. And that's kind of a rule that I, that I follow. So we'll see him graduate in December. Right. Uh, my oldest daughter uh, graduated uh, two weeks ago from the University of North Carolina, Wilmington. Oh, great, sure. And is looking to come here for our MBA program. Fantastic. So I uh, may have two of them here at, yeah. at some point in time. <laughs> uh, the 16-year-old that I mentioned is just finishing up 10th grade. Right. And then I have uh, a daughter who is finishing up 8th grade. So Tremendous. three daughters and a son. I love it. And your wife's gotten very active in the community. I mean, community, what you shared with us yesterday, clearly communications, right. A number one for you and the administration, but community and making a difference. We talked about the Heart Walk yesterday and you being the chair-elect for the 2009 walk, but to see uh, even your, your entire family getting involved, your wife in particular in the community. My wife has been very involved in the community. Uh, one, she's she has a passion for education and she has a passion for children and looking at ways to, to combine those and and she has been spearheading a fair amount of her energies lately on continuing what was started several years ago in women in philanthropy right. of really looking at helping those women who need to come back to school, want to come back to school, but cannot afford mm -hmm. to do so, and finding a way to provide scholarships for them. That's so it's, that's it's just, I'm just, I'm very blessed to have a wife who's as active as she is and, and is involved. And focused on education. And speaking of education, you talked about the Horry County School Board and its Board of Education, the great addition of Will Garland, even in an interim capacity. Yes. But his focus there, um, clearly on the financial side of really making a difference here on campus, but also being focused on the K through 12. Absolutely. Again, there, there, there are a lot of synergies that can exist uh, right. among the three education institutions in this area. We just got to find ways to make that a reality. Absolutely. In, a different, in, in addition, we get, we're running out of time. We talked about David Bennett yesterday, and he's got a very aggressive schedule coming up in the near term. We talked about Cliff Ellis. We failed to mention Gary Gilmore and some of the other amazing coaches and folks there in the athletic department. A lot going on with Coastal Carolina's athletics right now. There, there is an awful lot going on. And the problem of when you mention one coach, you almost well, I, have to I mention get in trouble. all of yeah, them. But, yeah. you know, I, I, I think we're at a point in time where, you know, Alan Terrell and our golf team is, right, is right. going through the tournaments now. Uh, the Big South tournament uh, has started, well, yesterday right, yeah. and, and will continue through Saturday. Yeah. We are knocking on wood, but all the, the information out there indicates that uh, we've got a very powerful baseball team this year, and we're just so proud of, of what Gary has done with our baseball team. Absolutely. We were with Coach Bennett about a month ago, a month and a half ago, focused on his role as the honorary chairman of the March for Babies. It was that day that he just found out that on Halloween of, I think, 09, he'll be playing a rival institution here in the state, but I think later this year, uh, is it Penn State? We open up our 2008 season uh, August 31st at Penn State. So Coastal Carolina has come a long way in, in its five plus years of football. Right. 
that uh, we're going to become a household name. That's tremendous. 14 months after that to be uh, rolling into uh, Tiger Town, rolling into Clemson into will be a big Clemson, deal. Clemson, and we've got University of Georgia on the uh, schedule, I believe, in 2011 or 2012, and we're looking at we're, we're and we've seen some things in the newspaper, but uh, we're ready to play USC too. Listen up, tremendous. What do you think drives you? Dr. DeCenzo, what keeps you real focused here? I mean, the excitement of being a university president is one thing, but acting it out and making it successful is entirely different. You know, that's, that's probably the easiest question I can answer. It's the students. There is an energy when you're around students on this campus. You see that mind that just wants to absorb, and you know that you're here, you're making decisions to ultimately help them achieve. And that's what really drives me. Very simple. Great. Thanks so much Thank for being you. with us this morning. Appreciate Absolutely. It. Appreciate it. Stay tuned to more Dr. David A. DeCenzo, the president of Coastal Carolina University. Coming up next. Although we could easily wrap with the university's new slogan, Dawning of a New Tomorrow, which is a powerful one. Sit back and think about that. Dawning of a New Tomorrow, Coastal Carolina University. I prefer to focus on the way that David, Dr. David A. DeCenzo focused on himself and what drives him. Listen to that word, students. Students would be so easy in, when answering that question to talk about the amazing faculty, which it clearly is, the amazing alumni, which really is a driver, this beautiful campus and everything about it. But to get down to the basics of students, even just yesterday when we were talking about athletics, he jumps in quickly. It's not athletics, it's student athletes. Student athletes, that's what drives it, whether you're 18, 19, 20, he talked about his son wrapping up at age 24. Folks can come, they can start, they can finish at lots of ages, but when you're here on campus and you're in the classroom, you're a student. Unless you're a professor, you're a student. Make a difference. Come out and visit Coastal Carolina University. Drive onto the campus. Visit any of their off-campus locations out of Conway. Travel all around the Strand. You'll recognize that Coastal Carolina University is making a difference. Dawning of a new tomorrow. David A. DeCenzo, thanks so much for being with us Thank this morning. Thank you. I appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely.